Buffalo Bill Jr. Buffalo Bill Jr. Buffalo Bill Jr. With his little sister, Calamity. Buffalo Bill Jr. brings you exciting action. Thrill and fun Whoa. with Judge Ben Barron Square, Wiley. Buffalo Bill, Buffalo Bill, Buffalo Bill. In the history books of the Old West, the stagecoach and freight lines occupy some of the most exciting chapters. Telling of the pioneers who had to fight and sometimes die for their belief in the future and progress of transportation. This is the story of one of those fights. they've been on, Jeff. Seems like they're already spooky. Yeah, what you hauling, load of from Silver Hill? Ah, uh, you fellas, go ahead and laugh. No, we ain't laughing, Jess. We're kind of smiling out loud. You and that ghost wagon. Come on, let's see if it can really move. I guess I'll live. Did you stop the wagon, Bill? Yes, sir. But how did it happen? Oh, Dawson stage. Those cars aren't fools spook my wagon team. On purpose, Jess? Sure, Ben. Just cause I happen to be doing something that most folks consider crazy. You mean like making those empty freight runs, Mr. Sunday? That's right, but I'll show them. When I'm back in real business again hauling silver ore, I'll bet you. Stage is coming in now. Sure enough, there they come. I'm gonna give those chicken liver coyotes a piece of my mind. You just walk through. Oh. Hey, do you two know that you just about got me killed? <laughs> we were just having some fun. Fun, eh? Well, suppose I poke you in the nose and see what kind of fun you call that. You've got no sense of humor, Jess. And driving that old wagon back and forth at old ghost town all the time is plum crazy. I'll leave him alone, mister. Silver Hill ain't gonna be a ghost town forever. It's gonna boom again just as soon as they reopen the mine. You've been saying that for two years now, Jess. And it's true, Dawson, whether you and your boys believe it or not. Well, there's a man out there in the mine right now. And he'll strike a vein. You just wait to see. Sure, sure, Jess. All right, boys, unload the stage. Hey, just a minute here. I got an apology coming. Go on, beat it, Jess. We got work to do. Hold on, mister. There's no call for that. Why don't you try pushing me around instead? Whatever you say, kid. All right, hold it, you fellas. You better tell your hired men to leave Mr. Sunday alone, Dawson. Yes, sir. Come on, Mr. Sunday. You better go over to the judge and be attended to. I don't get it, Mr. Sunday. Nobody would know the difference if you didn't make the freight runs, would they? But I would, Calamity. You see, Jess takes great pride in the fact that he's never missed a freight run, sis. 
I'm dead certain there's still plenty of silver in that mine. Besides, I signed a franchise, and I intend to keep my end of the bargain. You see, Jess figures that uh, by fulfilling his contract, he'll be in a better position to get a renewal on the franchise if and when the mine opens again. Yeah, they're going to know that the Sundays keep their bargains. And more important, my boy's going to have a real future. See, I'm doing this mostly for him. This will all be his Sunday. Say, uh, your boy's due home from college next week, ain't he? Well, that's right. John is going to make things different. You know, I got a feeling, Judge, that his coming home is going to change my luck. <laughs> we sure hope so, Mr. Sunday. <laughs> Haircut is missed. Oh, thanks, Judge. Silver, Mr. Trevin! Silver like you never saw before. A stuck a new vein. Three times richer than the old one, too. Yahoo! I knew it! I knew you'd do it! <laughs> Silver Hill's really gonna boom again. So's your freight line, Mr. Sunday. Yeah, but I ain't got the franchise yet, Calamity. Maybe Mr. Trevin's has got other ideas. I don't think so, Mr. Sunday. My company knows the way you've been carrying on here. You've got a fine record. What about my bid, Mr. Clements? Your bid? We have your letter on file, Mr. Dawson, but under the circumstances, I think Mr. Sunday's entitled to a renewal. Well, I, you horny toad of all the sneaking tricks, trying to get my franchise away from me. Only a business proposition, Jess. You can't blame me for trying. No, I suppose not, but you heard what Mr. Clements said. I guess that's the important thing. This is going to be quite a homecoming present for Johnny Redhawk, ain't it, Jess? You bet it will. Redhawk? Johnny Redhawk, Mr. Clemens. Mr. Sunday's adopted son. He'll be home from college in a couple of days. Yeah, he's going to help me run the freight line, just like I always planned. Is that some kind of a nickname? Oh, he's an Indian boy. I adopted him when he was a little bit of a type. Is there anything wrong with that, Mr. Clemens? Oh, no, of course not. I just, uh, well, uh... How did you happen to adopt an Indian? Well, I'll tell you. See, me and Johnny Red Hawk's Paw were in the 7th Regiment together. He was an Indian scout for Custer, and he got killed. I was in the rear guard with General Terry, who I'd have been at the Little Horn Massacre myself. Yes, sir, Johnny Red Hawk's Paw saved my life more than once. And I figured that taking care of the boy was little enough for him. Uh, Mr. Clemens has spent most of his life back east, Jess. Probably thinking of a real storybook savage. You know, Feathers and Tommy Hawk and all. Oh, that's not my boy, Mr. Clemson. Oh, Johnny Red Hawk's nothing like that. Why, he's a fine young man, as smart as wit, too. I'm sure he is. Now, if you'll all excuse me, I'll get over to the telegraph office and notify my company of the new strike. <laughs> yep, I got a lot of work cut out for myself, too. I got to get the freight office all fixed up. By Jiminy, I'm right back to business again. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Mr. Clemens. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Dawson. You understand. Oh, I'm not sure you do, though. What do you mean? That boy, just Sundays. I thought you ought to be warned. Warned? About what? Well, there are a lot of folks around here that don't think much of Indians. I'm afraid your company will find it rather hard to get miners to work for them when they find out that there's an Indian working on the freight line. But it seems to me he's got the same rights as anybody else. <laughs> yes, there's no argument there, but I've got a lot of drivers working for me, and they'd quit if they had an Indian boss in them. Hard to say what kind of a reception that Indian's going to get when he gets to town. Well, I guess I'd better give it some thought. But Jess Sunday's waited so long for this day. Well, I just want to do your company and you a favor. Oh, yes, of course. I'll, I'll think it over. Three days later, Bill rode out to meet his boyhood pal, Johnny Redhawk, who was due in on the stage. Not knowing, of course, that there was others who had the same idea but not with the same friendly intentions. Here he comes. Up, you fellas are out of luck. I'm not carrying a cent. You're carrying just what we want, mister. Get out of there, Indian. What's this all about? Just gonna learn your lesson, Engine. Learn you to stay out of where you're not wanted. Hurry 
straight up. Get him tied. You fellas got no right to do this. Get on down, mister. You're walking the rest of the way. The team will take the rig into town. All right, get going. Johnny? Yeah, I think so, Bill. Nothing broken, anyway. After two years away at school, it was quite a homecoming. Sure was. Think you can make it now? Sure. Let's go back and get the driver. Yes, it was quite a homecoming. When the stage rolled into town, the frightening experience on the road was momentarily forgotten by Johnny Redhawk in the joy of seeing Jess Sunday again. Most of us couldn't believe what had happened when Bill told us, but there was no denying that it had, and nobody could figure out why. Jess Sunday thought when Red Hawk got back from school, his troubles would be over, but we soon found out they were just beginning. A thing like this can build up, Judge Wiley. Prejudice can lead to a lot of trouble. Well, we have laws to handle any trouble that comes along, Famins. You have no cause to worry. Well, I'm not so sure. Mr. Dawson warned me something like this might happen. Dawson? You suppose he's behind this? Well, it wouldn't surprise me. But he wouldn't be responsible for an attack on his own stage. Oh, don't be so sure. Dawson wants that franchise pretty badly. Well, and I'd be inclined to give it to him if there's any more trouble. Well, any trouble that's happened sure wasn't Red Hawks, nor Jess's. I realize that, Judge. But what I want is the assurance that it won't happen again. If any trouble starts, Johnny Red Hawk won't start it. Please understand, I have nothing against the boy personally. But my company's interests come first. Now, we have a large investment at stake. And if Johnny Redhawk is going to jeopardize that investment, I just can't take a chance. I guess nobody could blame you for that, mister. I'm sorry, young man. I didn't know you were there. Doesn't matter, really. I heard it elsewhere soon enough. Oh, uh, uh, Johnny, this is Mr. Clemens. He's in charge of the Silvio Mine. How do you do? How do you do, sir? Sounds like I'm causing a lot of trouble around here. Oh, no, Johnny, it's not you. But someone sure wants to pin it on you. Mr. Clemens is just afraid that if he gives you and, and Jess the franchise, that it might bring on a lot of trouble. I was only expressing a doubt, Mr. Uh, uh, Red Hawk, but my company can't afford this kind of trouble. I hope you will have no more, Mr. Clemens. Yes, so do I. Now, if you'll excuse me. I'm sorry, Johnny. Oh, forget it, Bill. They told me at school the outside world would be a tough nut to crack. I forgot what I came in here for. Oh, Judge, have you got any paint? Oh, sure, Johnny. All kinds. We're going to give the freight office a new coat. Calamity's already offered her services. Oh, well, count me in, too, Johnny. And if we play our cards right, Judge just might give us the paint for free. All right. All right. <laughs> Calamity. Real professional. Thanks. I wonder if professionals get that much paint on their faces. No comments from downstairs, please. Or this can of paint's liable to slip. Beginning to look like a new place, isn't it, Dad? Yeah, since you came home, son, everything looks like you. <laughs> Gee, I'm a lucky guy to have you and good friends like Bill and Calamity. Don't forget where you got that free paint now, Red Hall. <laughs> <laughs> of course not, Judge. You've always been one of our best friends. Oh. Come on, let's get back to work. Come 
Yosemite. Could you get a little more on the Y, please? You hear that, Phil? He even knows the alphabet. Yeah, what do you know? An educated engine. Educated or not, I still say redskins belong in the hills. Listen, you loudmouth. You hightail it out of here, I'll chase you into the hills. Now, you wouldn't turn on your own kind, would you, Jess? Johnny Red Hawk's more my kind than I like so you could ever be. Go on, get away from here. We kind of like it here. Hold on, Johnny. Let me handle this. You needn't get involved, Bill. This is my trouble. I know, but you get in the scrape, then Jess will be involved. Now, look, I guess I didn't make myself clear the other day. I've got business with your Indian friend, kid. Get out of my way. mean well, and I may be letting myself in for a lot of headaches, but I've thought this over, and I've decided to give Jeff Sunday and his son the franchise. All right, but you're making a big mistake. Perhaps. Good day, Mr. Dawson. So if it's real trouble Clemens is asking for, we're going to give it to him. I want that franchise. Why don't we rough him up? He don't look like the type that could take much. Because bruises wear off, Frank. We're going to hit him where it hurts, right in the company pocketbook. What do you mean? I mean, we're going to show him in dollars and cents that he can't afford to do business with Red Hawk and Jess. <laughs> sure. All we got to do is blow up the mine. Frank, I ought to raise your pay for being the mind reader. <laughs> Mr. One, you better learn. What are you talking about? About you giving a franchise to a Redskin. We don't like it. And there's lots of others that don't either. So you're trying to intimidate me. We're not trying. We're doing it. What are you going to do? Just watch, mister. Maybe you'll know we mean business. of what'll happen if you give that franchise to Red Hawk.
is he? Oh, he'll be all right. How'd you two know what those fellows were up to? We didn't, Mr. Clemens. We just rode out here because Johnny Redhawk wanted to talk to you. I decided to tell you if my being an Indian would hurt your company's chances, well, I'd step out of the picture so Jess wouldn't lose his franchise. You just forget about it. My mind wasn't made up before, but it sure is now. You better get him in the cabin. Yeah, come on. And so, with Dawson and his men in jail, Jess Sunday was able to realize his long-for ambition and proudly witness Johnny Redhawk signed his name to the new franchise contract. Well, I guess that does it, Mr. Clemens. Yes, sir. We're in business for sure, son. Thanks to young Billy here and the judge. Hey, I got him, Cindy. Come look. Doesn't it look swell? It couldn't look a bite better, could it, son? I did a good job, if I do say so myself. But it needs a period. Calamity, look out! Oh. Now I know why the judge called you Calamity. Buffalo Bill tuned her. Not afraid of anyone, cause no one's quicker on the draw or quicker to defend the law. Buffalo Bill Jr., Buffalo Bill Jr. He's the son of a son of a gun. Buffalo Bill, Buffalo Bill. 